bottom section that's the most important because that is where the final time comes through. Gold medal winner on multiple occasions at World and Paralympic events. And Stevens is down by 2.74. It's a second place for the American. And I wonder if Van Bergen is there thinking what could have been once more. Final athlete then. Nineteen years of age, the American in a debut event here. Point four one down at the first check. This is the section we've been most interested in so far, certainly in the women's sitting category. This is the left-hander into the right that caught Van Bergen out. No such issues, but at a much slower pace, it would seem, from O'Brien. Sensible would be my outlook on that. At the moment, a medal awaits. What a start to the week. This will be for Sailor O'Brien. And the American hits the line. 118. We'll wait for the official time to come through. Just an issue at the bottom there, but O'Brien having no issue with making it down through all the gates. But it's Forster in 107.57 that starts this World Championships in the same sort of form she finished the last. Five from sixth. Or well, five from six, should I say, in Lillehammer and Annalena Forster as we wait for that third place time. Won't be beaten by it. So it's a good start for Germany when it comes to medals. Okay, so this is the third podium of the day. And it goes like this. Third position with 1826 from the United States, Sailor O'Brien. Second with 110 through one of the United States as well, Laurie Stephens. And the winner with 107.57 of Germany, Anna Lena Forster. Congratulations to Annalena Forster, Laura Stephens, and Sailor O'Brien. Al tercer podi de la jornada en aquestes categories femenines, amb victòria de l'Alemanya, Annalena Forster. My first answer in... In German. Well, congratulations. Five goals at the last World Championship. Another one already at this one. What a great start. Yeah, it's echt cool, dass es jetzt so geklappt hat wieder. Ich freue mich total. Ja, ich bin gespannt, was die Tage noch kommen. I'm very happy that I can achieve this, and I'm yeah, I'm excited for the next days. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, the next door is Vision Village, so now sound off and as soon as you can rule and as the results. Oh, that's all three of the women's contests done and dusted for the Super G. It's time for the men to 
tackle the same obstacles as the ladies before them. Neil Simpson there in the background. Waiting to go second. Jacinta de la Plaza was the man you saw a moment ago. Neil Simpson is an impaired Super G Paralympic champion. It's their inability to add the world title to that as well. He's got some heavy contests ahead of him. The youngster, Bertagnoli of Italy, springs to mind. So do does the youngster, Johannes Eidner. De La Place, who's made the jump from athletics to Alpine. De La Place having a remarkable, remarkable World Championships the last time of asking in Lillehammer. Super G was his thing. Got a downhill gold and the super combined as well. Couldn't quite turn that into Paralympic success, the Frenchman. Just the one bronze coming at the downhill. Fourth in the Super G, fifth in the Super Combined. Another fourth place finish in the slalom. Not so much for Simpson. Silver in the Super G, silver in the Super Combined in Lillehammer. He really turned that into success with a Super G gold when it came to Beijing. So here we go then, the men's vision impaired category. De La Place and Simpson will get us underway. Bertagnoli, Aigna to follow. They're at nine, taking part in the men's vision impaired category. Staring up at the hill, and a man staring down. The Laplace guided by Rui Picard. Looking to take the Laplace where no man's been before. Can he find yet another gold at the bottom of a World Championship hill? Neil Simpson and Rob Poth getting ready in the background. Andrea Ravelli and Giacomo Bertagnoli there in your shot. Another athlete with multiple medals already in his career. And that's the line they're looking to get to. Yeah. Paint just being put back on in certain sections. Certainly important for the VI athletes. A bit later, we'll go to the men's standing. That's Thomas Walsh of the United States of America, who's a fun-loving character, as you can see. Then bib number 19 belongs to Jacinta de la Place. Picard on the left side of your screen with the G. The guide's job to maneuver their athlete as quickly as possible through the gates and safely as possible as well. We've already seen possibly the biggest upset of the day coming in the women's vision impaired category. 
here there are four or five that could really win this realistically on paper but just like most sports things aren't won on paper we saw huge huge shock when the Paralympic champion Alexandra Rexova didn't make it past the first few gates due to an error in the women's VI category that's Johannes Eigner we will be hoping for much better still extremely young is Eigner Just 17 years of age he only turns 18 in April does Johannes Eigner part of the Eigner family that at the moment really having a lot of success in both the men's and the women's at tour and away we go with the men's vision impaired category De La Place, 33 years of age from Grenoble in France has congenital cataracts in the B2 part of this classification. B1 has no or very little line of sight, acuity. Marek Kubatska, the only skier in the B1, that's the most severe of the category. Those B3 skiers have the most vision. And B2 sits somewhere in that middle. Again, it's always interesting to see the guides and the skiers, what they choose to do, sometimes far away, sometimes very close and tight. Depends which part of the course they're on. And through the gate comes De La Place then. 59.24 inside 60 seconds. That would have been the ultimate start. Anything inside 60 is an opportunity when it comes to this circuit so far. These slopes haven't seen a, a sub-60. They have now. Neil Simpson and Rob Poff. Away they go. Just 20 is Simpson. From Scotland. Took up the sport in Aberdeen. He's 1.2 inside at the first intermediate gold medal winner in the Super G in Pyeongchang. Can he turn that in to world championship success as well? Britain holds its breath. 0.23. It's not as big a gap as he had at the first check, but Poth and Simpson are flying. The Paralympic champion. Will he go top? At the very first chance of asking, that is a very, very tight left-hander. But it's not far from home if you master it. He's looking to beat 59-2-4. Oh, he does. And not just by a little. It's a fantastic finish for Neil Simpson. 56-66, 2.58 seconds in front of De La Place. And the Paralympic champion sets the standard. Big, big run. Big, big run. But here's a man that knows all about putting in a performance when it matters most. This is Giacomo Betragnoli. Andrea Ravelli, the guide. He's 24 on the 18th of January. Betragnoli. And he finds himself 1.87 back here. Now Simpson dropped between the first and the second time check. Does Bertagnoli have the answer? Does Ravelli have the line to find some more time? Yes, he does indeed. Look at this. From 187 behind to 0 0.31 up. Can they hold this speed? Double Shoot. gold medal winners in Beijing. Slalom winner at the last World Championships. Four gold medals 
of the 2019 World Championships towards the line. He looks like he's dropped a bit of speed here. He has. Second, though, 57.94, 1.28 behind Simpson. Well, that bottom section shows you just how fast the flying Scott was. Simpson stays ahead here. Bertagnoli with a brilliant middle section. Johannes Eigner. He's still so young. He's never sure what we're going to get. What we know is there is a huge talent in that Eigner family. And Johannes Eigner with uh, Matteo Fleischmann as the guide. Again, just 17 years of age here. Already a double Paralympic champion. Already picked up two golds at the last World Championships, the slalom and the parallel. Silver in the Super G. In Lillehammer, bronze in the Super G in Beijing. What has the 17-year-old got on the mountain this time around? Again, from 108 to 0.13. But Bertagnoli had a bigger gap than that in this bottom section and lost it. This is where Simpson had some pace. This is going to be tight, you know. Oh, 0-2. 0-2. What a run from Eigner. But Simpson stays top. Two one hundredths of a second over the course of a 400-meter drop. It's absolutely nothing, but it's the difference between gold and silver. Marvellous. <laughs> Michał of Poland next up. Three fourth place finishers at the last World Championships. Is this where Gullis finally finds a medal? He's 2.03 down. Valas, or Kasper Valas, his guide. You can just see having to slow his own speed and then just takes a look behind the shoulder every now and again. All this has gone from 2.03 to 2.80. To find bronze here, you have to get past Bertagnoli, 57.94. That's not going to happen. For Gullis, can he get inside the minute mark? He's going to be just outside that 101.21 for the Polish skier. Nico <laughs> Stagel. Should be up next. Bib number 24. Yeah. Austrian. Yeah. Guided by Florian Erhate. Just 1.16 down. But Fagnoli was in similar territory. This part of the course in his run. Big slide from the guide to make sure that his skier was following the instructions. Big right-hander here. He's got through it. He's only 1.22 down here. If he can maintain that distance, he would be inside the top three here. Snaggle. Went to Beijing without a finish in either the downhill or the slalom. He is in the mix here. He's going to be outside. And in fact, there's a huge drop towards the end. He's just outside the minute mark as well. So he'll go behind De La Place in the finish too. Schnagel, though, with some very impressive work in the top half of the course. A couple of big slides and moments in the bottom half will be where that time was lost.
bib number 25 belongs to our Australian Patrick Jensen. Ethan Jackson, the guide. Jackson and Jensen on the case. Twenty-six years of age. Debut some nine years ago, back in 2014. Fourth World Championships that Jensen has appeared at. Yet to medal. It's been in around sixth and seventh as best place finishes so far a double Paralympian as well lost a bit of speed through that section there didn't he what a wide take Here he goes, 8.52 down in the M105. Time for the Australian. And next up will be Marek Kubatska, bib number 26. He's the lowest category when it comes to the VI section. This is completely blind skier out on the course. So the guide here uses a speaker on the back of her backpack, so not only does she have it in the ear of Kubatska, Kubatska is also following the sound from the speaker as well. So the difference between B1 and B2, quite obvious here. The speed is very, very obvious to you, the list of the viewer at home. Each of the athlete has a factored time. You'll see on the bottom right of your screen where it had the time ticking over. So everybody has a factored time. Those calculations are made based on your classification and the severity of your impairment. Kubatska's is 60.84, which is the lowest of any of the athletes here. But again, Kubatska has never let that bother him and was indeed a world champion in his own right. It's the one medal he's got, Marek Kubatska. 34 years of age, guided as always, by Maria Zatovikva. And when uh, Manik Kubatska won the gold in the giant slalom in 2019, pretty much everybody out on the snow went over to congratulate him. What a huge feat it was to find the pace and the speed. And at the moment, he's in the mix for a medal. He's just slipped away in this bottom stage. He's, you can see it here. They've lost all pace coming into this bottom flat section, which is what they needed. And it was always going to be that way because of the speed of the final few gates, but never mind. Oh, Kubatska, he's putting a good performance in the early stages. He'll be back in his more favoured slalom events. But uh, a B1 skier showing that, yes, yes you can get out on the mountain and do it. And Kubatska does it as well as anyone. Drops into seventh. On this occasion, there you can see that speaker we were talking about on the back of his guide. Look at our Korean skier at the moment. He's just uh, receiving some attention. I wonder if there was a connection issue with the earphone inside. See the little microphones in front of the face. That's how they communicate. The guide on this occasion, Jung Sang Hyun. And our athlete is Huang Ming Yu, who's getting ready to go. Just a delay out on the course as they rectify something out there for safety. The largest category of the lot coming up after this. 27 men in the standing category. And we're going to get led out by one of the best, if not the best, Arthur Bauchet. But here, still in the men's VI then, Huang Mingyu. 
sets off on his journey. Final of the men's VI athletes. Twenty-six-year-old. He uh, turns twenty-seven towards the end of the month. Will still be here competing. So uh, not sure whether he's scheduled to compete on his birthday or not. But uh, we'll find that out. Comes from a place called Buryong in uh, Korea. Athlete born with reduced vision, more so in his right eye than his left. And again, best place finish, a seventh in the super combined oh, in Beijing. He got seventh in the super combined in Lillehammer as well, so that will certainly be an event where they will have their attention set this time around. He's uh, 8.11 behind here as our final runner in the men's vision impaired hits the line safely. We've not had too many DNFs so far. We'll take a look at the standings in just a moment. Hang down in eighth position. Simpson it is, and look at the gap. It's not much at all, is it? 0 0.02 separates gold and silver, but Agnoli takes the bronze. Here they are, this Doris and the Gates. Third position with 57.94 of Italy, Giacomo Bertagnoli with Andrea Ravelli. Second position with 56.68 from Austria, Johannes Einer with Matteo Fleischmann. <laughs> The winner with a 56.66 of Free Britain, Neil Simpson with a Rob Pulse. Al body of the category of masculine and disc capacitors visuals, and Victoria Britannica, Neil Simpson, and Rob Pulse can mark up 56, 66. Segunda posición para la Austria, Johannes Aigner, en el guía Mateo Frischmann. Well, Neil, gold in Beijing, silver in Lillehammer, now gold in Espo. Perfect start in Spain. Yeah, um, just sort of carrying on from last season, just trying to work. Um, obviously, it's unfortunate not to have my brother right with me uh, guiding, um, but he's making a good recovery. I'm really, really thankful for Rob to step in. Um, and yeah, just... Happy, happy to get a good run in today and still still a uh, room to improve for tomorrow. Well, congratulations once again. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we move into the men's standing category next then. We've had one of the men's competitions, two still to come. Arthur Barche, a world leader when it comes to the men's standing contest. He's joined by 26 others in what is the largest field of this World Championship Super G. Kivari, Kush, Walsh, Lindstrom, Phil, Salka, Bliancic, all of those. Alexis Squimond as well, I suppose, in that bottom section will all probably say they are in with a chance. The hill very often can be your biggest rival, forget the names that are out there with you. If you don't go quick enough, if you don't find the right line, and if you don't stay in between those gates, those medals don't come. Well, Shane knows how to do all of those things, which is why he has a huge collection of medals at such a young age. Just 22. And the challenge of setting the opening time here. Double gold medal in his first World Championships in Tarvisio in Italy. Marche hitting the 
first time checking 1678, the second in 3731. Well inside a minute is what he would fancy. He's lost a bit of pace in this bottom section. That might be costly towards the end. But let's have a look at this. 57.74 for Rafa Balche. The reigning Super G world champion. And he's silver in his debut world champs at the Super G. And a little shake of the head there from Balche, but you're often not quite sure whether that's tiredness or disappointment with Arthur. This is Santeri Kivari. Took time out to come and say hello over in the event restaurant the other day. The youngster that uh, certainly just gets out there and goes for it. You you get one of two things with Kivari, a quick time or a DNF. He, as he gets older, he'll learn to control far more. 1.16 down at the moment, so Kivari needs to throw a little caution in this bottom section, to the wind at least. Because that's fallen now to 2.15. Well, we've seen a lot of the guys in the standing hitting the minute mark in the VI, should I say. You would hope that the standing athletes have that as well, but many of these, their impairments are in their lower limbs. It means that the, the force and the strength isn't quite the same as those in the VI category, and that's proven here. Kivari, 102.15. Muscle-wise, they just sometimes don't quite have what those in the VI would. Kivari on his way down. It's time then, 102. 1-5. As we wait for Belizari to hit the slow. Here he comes then, Federico Pelazzari. Twenty-two years of age. And a decent start in Lillehammer. Three bronze, uh, two bronze, should I say, to take home. Paralympic champion not here in this contest. China's Jing Yiliang. Certainly, this man here, Palizari, he's moving. He was just outside a second behind. Has he got what it takes over this last section? No, he's not. And he's also just outside a minute as well. But he's starting to show that Balche's time is better and better. And when I said that Balche was shaking his head and you're never quite sure whether he's disappointed or not, that's a, a prime example. No one's anywhere near him at the moment. 2.46 for Pelazzani. Pip 31 belongs to Robin Kush. 24 years of age. Skier from Switzerland. Born with hemoplegia, affects his right leg. So again, we talked about the, the strength that some of these standing athletes would have compared to ha perhaps the, 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 the VI athletes. While she would expect with the vision times that are quicker. It's actually physically hard for these guys to, to find their way down in that sort of pace. However, Barche has done 57-74. This is a great start from Kush. He was 0.26 inside. He's 0.48 now. Is this the time for Robin Kush to find his first gold at a World Championships. He only has one medal at a major event, and that was back in 2017 in Tarvisio. Is this the time for Robin Kush to start coming through? Sixth place finish in the Super G in Beijing. Didn't finish in Lillehammer, and he hits the line in first. 57-15 from Robin Kush. And the marker is there for everyone here. After Bauche slips into second, 0.59 the difference between the two. 
But Robin Kush goes into first position here. There's so many more skiers yet to come. It's a minimum difference of 0 0.5. Andrew Harahay with a new time to beat now. We're no longer chasing Arthur Barcher. We're now chasing Robin Kush. And Harahay. Using those outriggers, these sort of flat ski poles as opposed to the normal looking ski poles that you would find. These are more in keeping with those that use the sit skis as well, but it's whatever makes you feel comfortable out on the course. And Harahe is only 0.35 down here. 27 year old. Doesn't have a major medal to his name. Finds himself 2.3 down at that second intermediate. Can he find some more speed at the bottom to close that gap up a little? Lauche, 57 7 4, third at the moment is Pelazzari on 1 minute 0 0.20. Harahe just outside medal positions at the moment. Andrew Haragi now is fourth with 1 minute 0.61, 3 seconds 46 to go. Haragi's time. Okay. In fact, uh, disqualification is, uh, is called, so I wonder if Haragi's missed a gate that I've not noticed there. Come back so to see whether he's... In fact, it's the very last one. Oh, dear. I took a look down at the time and no noticed that Haragi indeed has missed the last gate. Well, that's a... Uh, a conversation about concentration to be had with Andrew. His teammate, number 33, should be next. Here he is, Walsh. He's 0.9 up here at the second time. This is potentially another medal taker. Is he a gold medal taker? Walsh has got better and better. The smiley character has started to add a little grit and determination to his skiing. He's going to be outside the top time. Well, where's he lost that on the bottom section? Thomas Walsh. Well, he's gone from being a good chunk inside to fourth. Four seconds and 14 above the leader who is still shoots and runs. Robin Cruz. Now he looks down. The smile won't disappear. It never does from Tommy Walsh. But he might just wonder when he looks at this back. Where did that disappear to? This is Alan Lindstrom of Sweden. One of two Swedes in the men's standing. At the moment, this course is showing us that different athletes are having different difficulties in different areas. Normally, you get a section of the course where you know that that's the, the key part, but at the moment, some people are well inside Kush in sections, and then the bottom seems to be where they're losing it. At the moment, Lindstrom, almost a second down as he hits the bottom, but he appears to have... A lot of pace coming in to this final right-hander. And he tucks, but he's going to struggle to hit the minute mark as well. Outside the top three, it's four for Lindstrom. 3.83 down. And again, a nod in the direction of Robin Kush at this point. Thomas Field, single ski pole user in the left. You see his impairment on his right arm, Thomas Field. One of those people born on New Year's Day, Thomas Field. 26 years old now. 
couple of World Championship silver medals back in 2011 and 2015. Fourth in the slalom in Beijing, so, so close to a Paralympic medal. How does he fare in this second time check? 0.69 under to 0.15 over, and again, that's the area where Walsh went even quicker. So it does make you wonder who finds what line and just how do they differ so much? Can Thomas Field keep up some speed? Turning in here, he's going to be outside the minute mark as well, it would seem. Yes, and well out, 102. 509 for Thomas Field as he goes into seventh position behind Kivari and Walsh. Two seconds, point 24. Now there is still another Swiss racer, Robin Kush. Still finds the time for a smile and a wave. Bib 36 belongs to Marcus Salka. One of the older athletes in the category, 31 years of age, from Klagenfurt in Austria. Golds back in La Molina and Sochi. 2013 in La Molina, 2014 in Sochi. Did it again in 2017 in Tarvizio. Won this event, the Super G. He's the reigning world champion from Lillehammer as well. So 1.70 is not a surprise. Marcus Salka just took a wobble off that gate. A moment ago, he's 2.86 now. This is a huge amount of time to drop on the bottom section against Robin Kush's time. He's got to hold it together, the Paralympic champion. He couldn't quite do that. He is the reigning world champion, and he goes first by two tenths. Oh, another outstanding close contest. Yeah. Oh, and he screams in delight. Okay, Marcus Salker. Is this a back-to-back -back yes, Super G title uh, for Marcus Salker? He did it in Lillehammer. He owns top spot here so in Espo as well. 56.95. 56 First athlete inside 57 seconds. And it's his teammate Niko Prijancic who goes next. Reigning champion holds on to first position at the moment. What can Prianti do? Point three five to point nine one. Here we go then. The contest is on between the Austri Austrians here. Kush sitting in second. Balche, a potential to miss out on medals if Prijancic can keep this speed up. The 25-year-old never medaled at a major event. Is this Nika Prijancic's time? No, fifth position. Another to drop so much time in the bottom section. And Nika Prijancic goes fifth. That's a best ever finish if he stays there. It's a best ever finish if he stays there. For Niko Prijancic in fifth position. 38 on the beer. This is Roger Hui Davi from Andorra. Just a very, very short journey from Andorra indeed, as we said at the opening of the programme here. The north east part of Spain. Very short journey to Andorra and France. A little slide out from uh, Puitavi there, but he finds himself 0.62 up, so a lot of these skiers are finding some good rhythm in the top section compared to those on the leaderboard. So where is the bravery? Where is the speed coming from in the middle? That's the difference maker when it comes to the final time at the bottom. You've got to carry that speed into that bottom section, and that's where some of them are struggling. And he's dropped a time here. From 0.62 up to 0.62 down. 
Can he find a bit more to give? 25 year old here. Again, another of those hitting the slopes today with the ambition of winning their first ever medal. Davi go sixth. 3.73 the difference. Oh, Tabalche. Hanging on to the bronze at the moment as the one of the three inside a minute. And it's not just a close either, actually. Those three all inside 58 seconds. Salka inside 57. Nobody else inside a minute. Goes to show you the quality of Salka, Kush and Balche at the moment. But people like Priancic and Walsh will be furious considering the time factor differences they had in the middle of the course. Now, Teogimur. He will fancy himself for a medal, as always, will Teogimur, 26-year-old from Switzerland. He was 105 down in the early stages. What do you do to correct that? Silver medalist in Lillehammer. Winner in, of this race in Pyeongchang. It was 111 down at the second check. Salka on 56.95. He's not going to hit that. Oh, he's nearly done the same mistake as Harahay there. Eventually goes into fourth position. That might have cost him a medal towards the end. I'm not sure what the confusion is. But that's the second athlete who has looked as if they're going to go round the outside of that very final gate. Interesting at the bottom indeed. Gimur, 2.01. And look at that, just about recovers. Do wonder what's catching people out there. Down on the course so should be bib number 40. Jordan Brossan, who's uh, got a little out of shape in the early section. Still on course. Brossan. 29 years of age. Already some two seconds back in the opening section. The fifth place finish. The men's at Super G in Lillehammer. Seventh in the slalom, Pyeongchang. So he's trying desperately to knock on the door of medals. He's not going to get one here. Not in this category anyway. 4.86. That's the difference between Brosan and the leader. He goes in behind Walsh in tenth position now, Brosan. Well, just a little out of shape. He's now fourth with 58.96. And right now, Jordan Brosan from France, tenth with one minute, one second. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Canada's Alexis Guimont from Quebec, 23 year old, bronze medalist in this very event in Beijing. Fourth in Pyeongchang, so it's certainly something that is improving. Is there a World Championship medal for Canada in this one? a second down at the first intermediate. And it stays exactly the same, 105 at the first and the second. It is Jordan Brazan. is And Alexis Guimon is coming to the end. Ultima Porta Pel Canadien. Alar across the line he comes. Guimon 2.38 down in the end, but he does become only the fifth athlete to get inside 60 seconds. 
See the arms flailing. And this is Thomas Rocha, the Austrian. Point three two up in the opening section. How does the middle look for Thomas Grocha? Twenty nine years of age, he drops to one oh two down, but that still leaves a potential of a medal finish here for the Austrian. A silver medalist in the slalom of 2017's World Championships. Nothing before and nothing after. But Krokar has lost time on the bottom as well. This is going to be well outside a minute, in fact. 5.20 down in the end. I'm sure some of the skiers will chat to them with each other at the end of today. And they'll be talking about, where did you lose yours? Because... It's certainly out there on the course somewhere. Some very quick starts undone towards the end. Oscar Burnham for France. Burnham, point four down so far. Continues to race through. Twenty-three years of age. His first World Championship experience was in Lillehammer last time around. It's one point five three down now. Lost a part of his arm back in. 2018. It's not far outside the minute. But through he comes here, 14th position for Oscar. To be the big dotty of Italy. The sun beating down on the course. We'll take a look. 28 year old Ben Dotti's opening time. Well, he's point zero two up. Ben Dotti. Certainly driving into these gates at the moment, clattering through that one. Again, another of the single leg skiers. Really having to drive that right leg into each and every one of the turns. Again, using outriggers as opposed to ski poles. Again, that difference maker is the middle of the course, isn't it? 2.42 now, the, the gap that faces Bendotti. And Bendotti will hit the line in 104.16, uh, down in 16th place at the moment. Okay, now David Bendotti is 16th with 1 minute 4 seconds, point 16. Seven seconds above the leader, Marcos Ángel of Austria. Should be Jules Segers up next, the 19-year-old from France. Comes from Leggett. 
a me hai fatto tutto quello che potevi fare, secondo me. È stato bene, secondo me, qui da me. E anche... Fractionally in the start, 0.17, but that uh, soon changes to 0.158. Sega's finishing uh, 5.29 down at the moment. We have the new time, Jules Seger from France, one uh, minute two seconds. Get it on, Jesse! This is Jesse Keefe. Of the United States of America. Just 18. Comes from Sun Valley in Idaho. Finding it hard going, youngster. The second World Championships, though. Ninth in that men's slalom in Beijing. Certainly an inspirational performance that uh, shows there's a real big potential for Jesse Keefe. Not to be here, though. He's uh, found a little bit on the bottom, but uh, 103 exactly means he slots in to 17th position. The long hair of Keith spilling out of the back of his helmet. Leanna Chris now, another of the single leg skiers. Turns 22 in just a few days. Another competing in their second World Championships. A little off balance moments ago. 17th in the super combined, the best performance of his career so far. A right leg amputee at the age of seven. And this will be around about 104 just inside 104, 103.82 from Leander Chris. That takes him into 18th position. Next up, one of our Japanese athletes, this is Gakuta Koike. A very delicate start to these World Championships, I have to say. Just the one disqualification, just the one Failure to finish, as far as I remember. Two failure to finishes, shall I say, but one of those very innocuous indeed. Van Bergen, the only person to actually miss a gate 
the women's. The uh, Slovakians in the women's VI having a, a tumble right at the top. But, uh, other than that, we've had Harahe missing a gate at the bottom here, but uh, hasn't bothered anybody else since then, really. And uh, Koike comes in here in 17th position. Patrick Halgren. Already a steady amount of time down in the opening 30 seconds or so. 40 years of age. Halgren. A couple of races in Lillehammer, a couple of races in Beijing so far. time as he comes into that bottom section then he's going to be outside that minute marker is he going to be outside 104 he's not he could be 10370 6.75 down Halgren now will drop into 19th position this is just five left to come what's that German athlete Next up, Christoph Grosnet. Just 19. Another that uh, had a couple of runs out during the last World Championships and the last Paralympic Games. Didn't get a finish in Beijing. He did on both occasions in the giant slalom and the slalom in Lillehammer. He's done well to maintain an upright there. He certainly hit a little bump in the road, as they would say. But he corrected himself, which, again, as a single leg skier, is not, is not something that's easy to do. Glossner into the final turn and final few gates, and he will hit in around about 103, at 103.42 for Christoph Blutzner of Germany. And now Christoph Blutzner is 19th with 1 minute, 3 seconds, point 42. 6 seconds, 47 both, Marcus Alper. The unbeatable leader for the moment. Arvid Skoglund of Sweden, and we saw our first Swedish competitor a little bit earlier on in Aron Lindström. Lindström currently sitting in ninth position. Skoglund not off to the sort of speed that uh, Lindström is used to, just 19 as well. From uh, Ulfersund, this is at the moment where the uh, Para Nordic World Championships are taking place so uh, clearly a good venue for skiing two finishes at the last world championships he uh, had two dnfs in beijing three finishes there with the best of 15th in the slalom and Skoglund will go into 23rd position here Thomas Charles Walsh of the United States 
Three still to come in the men's standing, but at the moment, Marcus Salka will be holding on to that gold come the end of these races. Kush and Bosche will give us the second and third place finishes. Marcus Nilsson Grasto, Norwegian. Always hopes of medals will be in the men's sitting, of course. Yes, Pedersen still to come in this contest. Nilsson Grasto, though, that's a top 20 finish at the moment, 18th for Grasto. one-year-old from Oslo finishes his run <laughs> into the final few athletes then this is Kohei Takahashi himself over a minute down the first intermediate. Seconds or so then for the Japanese athlete Takahashi. It's going to be around about 102, 103. Gets inside 103. That's decent from Takahashi inside the top 20. 17th position for him. With one minute, two seconds, 75, five seconds. 80 above Dalina. This is still Marco Salha. And uh, only one racer to come it is. Austria's Manuel Rackbauer. Here we go then. Manuel Rackbauer of Austria. The final of the skiers in our first day for the men's standing. 18 athletes still to come in the men's sitting. Minute has gone. And that time 105 19 in the end. 105 19, 54 position. Okay, so we already have the podium positions. Let's go for the prize giving ceremony here in the finish line. 
And that's the final of the athletes, all 27 of them in the men's standing, just one. With, uh, a failure to get through that last gate. The third position with it was, but it's Marcus Sarkin that takes it by two France, tenths of a second from Robin Kouj. Arthur Balchet settles for the bronze. And as we said, the winner with 56 seconds, point 85 of Austria, Marcus Sacha! Congrats to Marcus Sacha, Robin Kusch, Claude Boche, the podium with uh, Austria, Switzerland and France in this men standing category. Congratulations, la plodi men, la plodi d'aquesta categoria masculina en peus. Al guanyador Marco Salger, segon Robin Kusch, tercer Artur Boucher, representant els grips d'Àustria, Suïssa i França. So congratulations, Marcus, back-to-back -back world champions. You did it in Lillehammer, you've now done it in Espo. What a great feeling. Yeah, it is a great feeling. Um, was pretty nervous in the, at the start because, you know, six, six days of not skiing is not that fine. But uh, I was very pre prepared and uh, I got an excellent run. Um, yeah, heute ist es richtig schön, wieder eine Titelverteidigung geholt zu haben. Um, einfach unglaublich. Es war nicht einfach, uh, den Fokus zu halten, weil halt einfach sechs Tage nichts gegangen ist. Und um, war aber trotzdem gut hergerichtet und gehört auch sehr schnell auf Skikopf. Congratulations again. Thank you. Into the final event of the day then. This is the men's sitting Super G. Good out way. Avi Dagan, Jeroen Kampscher. All on that second page, but will they be chasing this man here? Yes, but Pedersen. If it's lightning quick down a mountain that you've tuned in for, then this is the man for you. Yes, but Pedersen. Just 23 years of age. Has picked up seven gold medals in the last two major events. Three in Lillehammer, four in Beijing, including the Super G. He knows that his biggest contest comes from people like Jeroen Kampscher. But Pennison gets a chance to set the mark here for everyone to follow. No such difficulties so far. Clean, quick run here. This is going to be quick. This is going to be around about 57. Might even be just inside. It's not. 57.34 from Jesper Pedersen. And the Norwegian gets to sit and wait and wonder, is this another gold? <laughs> Niels de Langen. One of two Dutch hopes when it comes to sit skiing. Niels gets stronger and stronger every time I see him. 24 years old now. It's a gold that evades him at the moment. Bronze in his opening world champs in the slalom. Silver, the last medal he won in Beijing. Also in the slalom. He perhaps wouldn't be here expecting anything from the Super G. Those slalom events are his bread and butter. And he finds himself down on Pedersen at the moment. But De Langen 
Sometimes for him, and he'll tell you this, but sometimes for him, staying in the upright is his biggest challenge. He's done that super well here as he tucks in and aims for the line. He's going to be outside, but not by too much in the end. It's 166, 59 seconds bang on for Niels de Langen. Not sure that will be medal worthy at the end of the 18 athletes, but we wait and see. Certainly, Jürgen Kampschler will be hoping to go much quicker than that. Rene Di Silvestro will be up next. short delay at the top there and uh, the job to keep the Italian warm number five there was uh, Takeshi Suzuki he and Taiki Mori <laughs> to come later Mori and Suzuki bibs four and five this is Pedersen as we get ready Again, just trying to keep themselves warm, keep themselves ready for action. And uh, hoping that that delay to the start won't be much longer. And we do indeed get back underway in quick time, this sent René Di Silvestro. Super combined sitting gold in Lillehammer. Super G bronze. And neither of his medals in Beijing were in either of those. Both the giant slalom and slalom was his friend when it got to China. Oh. Point seven seven down in the opening section. It's only point three five. I'll give you the time at the bottom off the official system. We've just lost it on the screen for a, br a brief moment. So here's the Italian into the final two gates. Then let's take a look at this time as he hits the line. Oh, it's point three nine behind. Point three nine from Di Silvestro. He has indeed challenged Pedersen, but has fallen four tenths of a second short, give or take. Di Silvestro into second, and not by much. There's still some very big names out there to come on that start list. This is Taiki Mori of Japan, 42 years of age now, inspired by the 98 Nagano Winter Games whilst in hospital, and has competed at six of his own Paralympic Winter Games since then. Four gold medals at World Championships 2011 and 2013. Hasn't picked up a gold since there, but he has continued to be on the podiums when it matters. He's only 0 0.03 down here. Two bronze medals in Beijing showed that there was still plenty left for him to give in this sport, even in his 40s. And Mori, what can he come up with here? 57.34 is what we're looking for. This is very quick from the Japanese. And it is in, 0.36 inside. Japan have themselves a leader. Take him on it. 
gets inside 57 seconds, 56.98, and Pedersen is removed from the top of the podium. What a run! And the 42-year-old has just shown all of the youngsters that he is a force to reckon with still. Takeshi Suzuki is uh, some eight years younger than his teammate Mori. But he has a, a decent amount of medals to his name, just like his teammate. And again, he's somebody who just continuously picks them up at major events. He couldn't quite make a podium in Beijing. He got double bronze in Lillehammer. And he has got four World Championship golds in the past as well. Japanese Sitsuki has went through a real purple patch between 2011 and 2015. 1.17 down, though. He's got work to do here. There isn't a huge gap to sandwich himself between Pedersen and Mori. He might get in between no! Sylvester and Pedersen, perhaps. Just had a little yelp through the microphones. He needs a 57.73. He's not going to get that. Is he inside a minute? Just 59.88 from Suzuki. Mori was quick. Suzuki will have to settle for fifth place at the moment. Could out wait. 38. Next up. Bib number 60. For Kurt out on the course, and there he is. Well, I'm missing a few big names again in this category. Uh, I have to say a big hello to Andrew Kirker, a name that you normally would see on these lists. Get back to racing at full speed soon. Been unlucky with his injuries in the last couple of years. Kirker here for Canada is Oakway. And he is driving himself into these turns, but at the moment, to no avail, he's found himself some 1.42 seconds back as it stands. He's got to be well inside a minute, not just inside a minute anymore. A medal is well inside at 57. He's going to be around about 58 and a half. He is 58.64. For Oakway he goes fourth. It's the fourth quickest time so far. He's ahead of the Lang, he's ahead of Suzuki. But it is off the podium for Kurt Oakway for now. The man from Calgary, Alberta. The former Paralympic Super G gold medal winner. He's not going to pick up a medal here in the Super G in Espo. Ravi Dragan. US team. Oh, and that's an out. Well, if he's through the gates, he can continue. He's 1.41. It looks like he is, but uh, well, a slide on the side doesn't mean you're out. And Dragan has composed himself enough to continue and get some race time under his belt. You might have heard in the last interview well, the skiers saying about missing out on days, even with the weather as bad as it was, getting out there on the course wasn't possible. Not even for training, let alone competition. So uh, nobody wants to go out super early here and miss out on the chance to come down at speed. And that's again. Gets across the line eventually. He'll know that that's uh, a time that will drop him into last position. Dragon. There's the slide. Just gets himself back vertical in time for the gate. Big hop. And then another here. But he manages to slide back inside that red gate. 
Jeroen Kampschler. He knows what it's like to win multiple medals in one event. Kampschler just 23. Three golds in Tarvisio. Just a singular gold in Pyeongchang. He turned that into five gold medals in the 2019 World Championships, only for Pedersen to come and reign on the parade ever since. These two have battled it out, course after course after course, and it's an opportunity for Kempstler once again, but this time it isn't Pedersen he's chasing, it's Mori, 56.98 to beat. Pedersen's been quick, can he get there? Oh, he's just outside. Well, today we've had a 0 0.02, and now it's even closer. Jeroen Kampschur misses out by one one hundredth of a second. It's a gutsy performance from the young Dutchman. And there is no point trying to analyse where you lose 0.1 of the clock in Alpine. But what matters is he has. And Taiki Mori continues to sit in goal position. Oh, Roland with a big tumble here. He hasn't needed the nets at the side. Roland is up and fine by the looks of that, but he's certainly out of the contest. Certainly the men sitting is where we very often come to get used to uh, a few slips and spills. And this was Canada's Brian Roland that did just that here a moment ago, 36 year old. His second World Championships. This first race, though, ends with him sliding out and missing that right-hand red gate. So Roland goes from the course. Next up will be Sam Tate from Australia. We've still got Pirel, Bisquet, Brewer, Brazdegan, Dravitsky, Balkan, Hanlon and Sleg all to come. Slide out from Brian Rowland just gives us a slight delay before Sam Tate gets underway. That was Pirel in the background. Here's Tate. Looks like the Australians have got some new uniforms. Can I go last? I can't get my outrigger down. It's frozen. Can take raw when it comes to his time out on the course. He's set. Uh, a change here. Tate has got a problem, it would seem. So he's got himself out of the start gate. So we're going to go with 65, uh, which is Victor Pirel. I think Tate can still go. I don't think there are anything in the rules that would stop him from going especially if it's an equipment malfunction before he even starts. But I'll have to double check that. We'll see whether Tate reappears at the gate. But at the moment, that's what he was pointing to his glove for. Apparently, he's got a problem with his outrigger, uh, Sam Tate. So it is Victor Pirel who's out there now. So uh, Pirel. Pirel gets away to a 1.39 difference in the opening section. And again, we'll come back to you on the situation with Sam Tate and his equipment a little bit later on. Pirel, 30-year-old. 
who's uh, actually 31 today, racing out here on the hill on his birthday. So a uh, big happy birthday to Victor Pirel. Can he come up with a performance that he will consider good enough for a birthday? It's his second World Championships. He was uh, did very well in Lillehammer. He's got uh, his preferred slalom events to come later in the week. But a run out on your birthday. Blow away the cobwebs. PL 104 13. This is uh, Nicola Bisquet Hudson from Chile. The only athlete from that country competing here. I'm hearing that Tate will go a little bit later after Matthew Brewer of the United States of America. So uh, we'll keep an eye out for Tate a little bit later. This is the second time that we've seen Nicola Bisquet Hudson at a World Championships. He competed in the 2019 version across the uh, Kranzkagora and Selenavea slopes. Tenemos un temps, aquí está el Chile. In the seventh place, all the Chilean Out on the course now then, Matthew Brewer, bid 67. 47 years of age, he took part in Beijing, got a 12th place finish in the slalom, took part in the giant slalom as well, so those will be his preferred events. Complications with his cancer has led to the amputation. last couple of years he's started to get more and more into the competitive side of this skiing and here we are seeing Matthew Brewer competing for the USA It is the ninth position, six seconds above, six seconds point eleven above. The leader, Japan Stakimori, no changes on top. So we do eventually get Sam Tate. A little problem with the timing here on this run, but uh, we'll uh, come back to his time. 18.54. You can see the custom made mono ski there. The uh, had a right customized job on it. It matches the uniform as well, so uh, it's a good look for Tate. You'll see him coming at all possible turns. At the moment, he was 1.16 down in the opening section. There you go, there's the time. He's 4.53 now in this uh, second section. The final few athletes then. We've still got uh, five to come here. Hits the line in 103.37. For Tate, that puts him in 10th position. OK, 
would have been frustrated to have had a problem at the start of that race after several days of getting ready. One minute, three seconds, point 37. It is a tenth position right now for Australia's Sam Tate. Six seconds, 39. So only Brian Rowland with a did not finish here in the men's event. There was only one DNF in the women's sitting as well. Oh, that was uh, 69 waiting. Is uh, Dravitsky. This is Brazdegan. Lou Brazdegan of France. 27 years of age. Some 3.49 down here. Another that's taking part in his second World Championships. Got a fifth place finish in the giant slalom in Lillehammer. It's pretty close to a medal on your debut. Came in in seventh during the men's slalom in Beijing as well. So clearly the latter events being his more preferred but he's got himself into ninth here 4.54 is the difference between Lubras de Gant and Teiki Mori next up will be Billy Dravitsky of New Zealand Just 21 years of age. And this is a debut world competition for him. Don't know a great deal about this young man. Five down at the first part, and he's down himself. It looks like a little tumble as well. He'll be able to correct himself, but he will not make it back through the gates, I would imagine, at this point. But uh, it looks as if we are out here. Big slide. Just see a bit of a, a flip from one side to the other. Nothing too serious. I'm sure he will be absolutely fine. Magnus Bachen is getting ready. Twenty-three, another making a debut at a world event in Para Alpine. Another slide out, quite wide there. He obviously thinks he stayed inside the gates. Couldn't quite see from our angle, but he's going to continue. He's Magnus Balken. Well, Jesper Pedersen of Norway down in third. Kampsur in second. And Taiki Mori rolling back the years. Currently in first position. Just two more to come. You wouldn't expect to make a change in those top positions. Finish line and uh, we'll see the final time. Yes, he lost some time in the middle of the course. And this down comes and finally 14 for time 10685. Ah. Uh, we we'll see here. 85. Just gets a little hop. Above the and again, on a singular ski, at the speed that those bucket seats are going, very hard to correct anything like that. Josh Hanlon. Away goes the Australian.
25 years of age. Competed in Lillehammer and in Beijing. The sixth place in the slalom for uh, Josh Hanlon. There's hopes for him to find medal sort of form. But again, more so in slalom than perhaps here in this Super G. Already down on the time. Again, for many of these guys just getting out there, being able to get to grips with what the courses feel like, what it feels like up there, the conditions. Very new to the sport, but certainly wants to attack it every time. Does Josh Hanlon? As he starts to enter the final few gates, his time will be well outside medals, but he gets to the bottom unscathed. 106.60 puts him in 14th position. The final time, one minute six seconds, playing 16. Another who uh, comes up with a big slide. You now, final athlete, not only of this contest, but also of the day here in Ispo. This is Alex Sleg. One year old from Poole in England. Competed again in Lillehammer and in Beijing. He finished. The giant slalom down in 26th in Beijing, but there's another one that's uh, learning the ropes at speed in the world of para alpine. He is indeed the final athlete. Oh, and he's uh, lost the ski and just needs to come to a, a safe halt out there on the course. He has done. There's plenty of movement from Alex Slag as well, so we would uh, expect him to be okay it would seem you get reunited with that ski but that is the final racer of the day and it didn't change of course the final standings of the men's sitting classification we'll take a look at the final results when we have them in a few moments but Di Silvestro is the man that misses out in fourth position yes but Pedersen went first and set a decent time but he ends up in third position as it is it is Camp Schreur in second. Look at the gap. Just one one hundredth of a second. But Taiki Mori will not care. He is going to take a gold from day one. Second position with 56.89 from the Netherlands, Jaren Kamstra. And the winner with 56.98 from Japan, Taiki Mori. Lovasio par Taiki Mori del Japó. Jaren Kamstra del Spaces Bashus and Jasper Pedersen de Noruega al body. And in this last category of the day, men sitting, here's the podium with Taiki Mori, the winner, second, Jerem Kersler, and third, Jesper Pedersen, representing Japan, Netherlands, and Norway. Okay, well, Taki, congratulations. Yet another uh, World Championship medal. 42 years old, but you're still doing it. Tell us how. Yeah, we had so many windy days. And as about today, it's very good condition. 
and she will be very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so we must take him on here. Winner of the Isla Escatera of the Day, man sitting. Well, that's it. That's all the action for day one of the, the Espo 2023 FIS Para Alpine World Ski Championships. Make sure you join us again for more action later on in the week. Thanks very much for all of us here in Espo. Thanks to you all. Moltes gràcies a tothom. Fins aquí aquesta competició d'avui. Avui sí, ben en calma, excel·lents condicions de neu. Hem gaudit d'una magnífica jornada. I demà tornem-hi. Moltes gràcies a tothom. Okay, we remind all the teams that uh, today we have a prize giving ceremony at the terrace of the restaurant. So, see you there. Stay tuned to you there in about, yes, we guess, about half an hour. The prize giving, the official prize giving ceremony at the terrace of the restaurant. See you there in about half an hour and uh, as usual this afternoon we'll have the captain's meeting at the village of a spot